see if you can feel the subtle rhythm of the breath. Inhales expanding outward in all directions. And exhales that beautiful, comfortable relaxation. Take a moment to connect with our intention for today, which is the idea of grounding. This is kind of a fun idea to connect with when we're doing aerial yoga, because there are significant chunks of time when we're not touching the ground at all in aerial yoga. So then the idea is in any pose that I find myself in, how can I release down to gravity? How can I let my body relax more? How can I breathe better? How can I let all this good stuff just be more relaxed? And so in that way, we're taking ourselves out of any sort of panic mindset, anxious mindset, stressed mindset. And we're putting ourselves into a good, calm, peaceful, steady place where things still happen, just you don't have to have that anxious energy with you. So with this idea, let's go ahead and take those initial stretches, arms going to the back, shoulders right, and shoulders left. Using these first mo moments of movement to really give our body a chance to check in with anything that's tight, Become aware of it so we can be extra kind to it. So when that's happy, right knee comes in, let's give it a hug. Right leg can start to stretch up to the sky. Exhale, bring that right leg all the way over to the left, hook the ankle, slide the shin in. A nice inhale. And exhale, the leg frees its way out. Maybe another tug, and we drop it down. Left knee in. Pause for a moment, maybe an ankle roll or two. Are you ready? Leg extends all the way up. Give it a stretch. And hook the heel over to the left, slide the shin. upward and dropping it down here you get to have a choice as we're sitting up you can kick your feet off the front end and you can either head into a back bend the bow pose sinking backwards or you can wrap your feet around heading to the full inversion already so whichever one feels better right now just head to it and we'll spend some time there you'll just listen to your body Kind of up to you today how much time feels appropriate just breathe and be with the experience until you are happy then you can come up
Good. So being up, let this be a chance for the neck to get a little bit looser. Just rocking the head about, about left. And eventually right. Just good, easeful things going on. And then as we start to stack our spine tall, bring your arms onto the inside. Let your head drop down, chin to chest, so we're tall up to the shoulders, and then the head drops down. Clasp the hands around the back side of the head, and then don't pull on the head, but weigh the head down with your arms. So we're giving that neck another chance to just relax. to release the head the head comes back up let's bunch up the fabric to the back door and then that back shoulder rotates open to the wall in the back or circles around the back side of the head after that stretch for the neck let the neck and the, the head just kind of ease backwards resting into the fabric Good, release, take it to the other side. The back arm stretches to the back wall or circle the upper head. Starting to release. Bring both arms around the outside for a moment. You're hugging all the way around the fabric, grabbing onto your wrists or your elbows. And once you've got that good clasp, push your shoulder blades backwards so that you're spreading that surface area in between the shoulder blades apart, creating so much more space. Right. Mm -hmm. So let your spine start to stack again. Once it's stacked, open up the arms. We'll take a core movement right away to engage those muscles that we're just stretching. So this is the boat pose. So start to feel your spine stacked tall still. If you're thinking back, hip toes can be extended out. What we'll do is trace some diamonds. So legs go wide and then they're, they end up together lower and then wide and they end up together higher. So your pace, your speed, good. We'll take three more. Two. And one. Good, legs drop back down. From here, bring your right elbow on top of the left elbow. And then each hand grabs each shoulder and then walks as far back toward your shoulder blades as possible. Once you've got that grip onto your shoulder blades, what you'll do is start to round the spine back and drop the elbows down. So it's like we're trying to curl into a tiny little ball. Again, this will get that spot right in between shoulder blades.
Good, start to unwind. Good, gradually the spine works its way back straight again. Arms come to the outside for a moment. These will be a couple of bicycles, not too much, but leaning back, we circle one leg out and then the other. Here's 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, dropping the thighs down, arms back inside. This time left elbow on top. And then each hand walks its way back toward the shoulder blades. Once you've got that grip, round the spine and drop the elbows down, creating so much space. Good, unwinding. We'll head our way inside the fabric. So choose the side that helps you to see the easiest. And, th and then you'll straighten the arms to that side, get that leg up and over. We'll take our heels inside. Good, and we'll immediately go to our cobbler's pose, bottoms of the feet touch. This is a space where you can rest the head on the fabric behind you, or you can rest the forehead in front of you. Just find the best, most relaxing, peaceful place to be with the head. So what the spine wants to do, sometimes it wants engagement to lift. Other days it just needs a break. We've been using it too much, or we're just in a low energetic state. Feel how the shoulders are even after that stretch we did a moment ago. And as we're sitting here, it's almost like we're inside of a seed. So imagine the seed is rocking because it's in somebody's hand, walking that seed to a pile of dirt where it can start to grow and start to flourish. So imagine the seed that's inside of you, the seed that wants to burst forth into a plant. And just kind of visualize that process. What does it look like? Maybe what does your seed mean to you? What is it that you're growing? How vital is roundedness to a plant? So often we think about a plant being everything above the ground that we can see. That's where the fruit is. That's where all the growth Maybe the branches and the leaves are. But if you think about it, none of that could be even the slightest that possible without a tremendous amount of growth down into the earth. So let's be with that groundedness, that nurturing quality, that stability. A really good inhale. Exhale, let's let the legs spread open, push them wide. Like the first little spots of that, that seed to start bursting forth to life. Good. 
and we'll start to take both of our legs into the fabric in front of us. So you'll take your hand like a stop sign signal and then push that into the fabric in front of your face. Then take your opposite heel up and then into that space where the hand is. Once you've got one foot up, you just have to take the other one right next to the first. And then let your legs start to stretch upward as much as they feel like they're okay with. I imagine that this is what it feels like when the seed is so full that it's about ready to burst open with its life. It feels kind of like this, like these muscles that are stretching and it's like they need so much more space. It's like we can no longer play small. So you can stay there a bit longer if you like, or you can take it back to a cobbler pose, bottoms up together. You choose how deep the hill slide in. Good. And then from here, let's start to send our legs out the front end. When they pop out, we can come up to a seated place. And then we're going to head back like a vampire shape. So take the fabric on your shoulders. All the excess goes to the waist. We do want extra at the feet so that we can have the right leg inside of the fabric and the left leg free of the fabric. Good. So from here, hands grip up, feet come up, press into the fabric to rise. Take just a breath or two here. Then your right foot that's inside the fabric drops to the space in front of your chest. Left foot goes all the way to the floor. Oh, there you go, you made it. <laughs> Good, if you even wanna hop that foot on the floor forward, so you can relax even deeper backward into the splits, that's perfectly fine. This is one of those questions, how much can I let gravity take over? Because really the deeper we can relax, the deeper we sink into it. Is your toe pointed on your right leg or flexed? I like to point it, but if you need to flex it just to send some more energy, that's fine. Yeah. I have a little ballerina feet, so yeah, I, can, you do. <laughs> I can comfortably point. <laughs> Okay, so one more breath. Then if we hop that foot forward on the ground, hop it back again, right under the hip. And then we'll switch just by stepping left foot into the fabric, and then right foot freeze its way back down to the floor. Got it, if you did the hop forward, go ahead and do that again, and then sink into gravity. Another breath in. And then we'll hop that foot underneath us. 
At this point, you can play. So maybe both feet come inside. Maybe you're playing like a, a flying vampire plank. Maybe you're coming up to full vampire pose. Maybe you're switching back and forth. This is kind of your free time, whatever you like. Even if you want to break and come back into it, this, that's also fine. Just kind of enjoy yourself. <sighs> Just mm -hmm. like this feels really good. I like that one. It's almost like plow pose. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a great lower back stretch. This recovery time will be up to you. So once again, stacking straightness up to the shoulders, the head drops down. We can clasp the hands behind the back. The hands go over to the right hip and then start to tilt the head closer to the right shoulder. Good, roll the chin back to the chest, hands to the left hip. And then roll the ear, the left ear a little bit closer to left shoulder. Good, release the chin back down. Head comes up, 
Hands over to the right hip, and then from the upward position, drop the right ear to the right shoulder. Getting a whole new set of muscle groups. Good, head up, hands to left hip, left ear to left shoulder. Releasing the hands. Let's take a grip of the fabric. Let's lift our weight up and out. Let's do our circle around the fabric. Wrap around, up high. And at your own pace, let's do a few of our hip circles. So hip sink back. And you can take this fast or slow circle to one direction a few times until your hands want the break. When you get to that break, you'll wiggle your fingers for a moment. Good. And when you're ready to go back into it, a few circles to the other direction. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Okay, when we take out our hands, catch the fabric onto your elbows. And then what we're going to do as we start to lean forward is drop down toward our knees. And from the knee position, you get to choose how far forward we bring our weight. The more weight goes forward, you'll notice the tighter the fabric is on the skin. So it's up to you to determine how much is good. You'll also start to notice the deeper you go into it, the more the shoulder blades squeeze together and open up the front of the shoulders. So you choose that perfect spot where you're okay for about five more breaths. And hips over the knees. And kind of straighten the arms and then let the fabric slide down the wrists. Good. Bringing the fabric out in front, you'll grip on about as wide as the shoulders, come back up high kneeling. This is puppy pose. So the hips stay over the knees and the heart starts to drop down. Straight arms is a bit deeper on the shoulders. Bent elbows is a little bit easier, but you can play with what feels better. Okay, sitting the hips back onto the feet, let the spine purposely round the other way. It's like bringing the shoulder blades away from one another again. Good. Straightening the spine up. Let's use this grip to help us step one foot and then come up to stand. What we'll do is step the, the right ankle inside of the fabric. And so from this spot, first we'll take a little stretch forward. So gripping up high, we can take a split. Just kind of feel those muscles stretching for a moment. Good. Weight comes back. Left hand goes to the outside of the right strand. This is helping to push the foot further to that left side so that we can get into the IT band. Yeah, it's a balanced thing for sure. And then the other arm just starts to open up. Just a nice, easy twist. Good. Returning forward, slip the arch of the foot into the fabric. 
bent knee or straight leg. We're gonna do some nice pull-ups. So straight leg is harder, your choice. So gripping on, take an inhale, crap. Exhale, pull up. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, and then one with control so you're not swinging as much. Going a little bit slower to rise. Left foot winds around. And then left arm has to come forward and through the center. Got it. And at the heart, we give that arch of the foot just a couple of breaths. Right hand up for safety. Left hand grabs it on as soon as it can. Once we're safe with our grip, unwind left leg and then send it through the center. As we grip on tight, we do a little pull up, tuck the right toes into the fabric, and then we lower ourselves in front of the fabric. You got it. Okay, so a moment with quad stretch, so just an easy grip and then lean back into the fabric. Good, weight back over our leg. The grip can either be nothing or gripping low. We're doing 10 lunges, so kick back 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Good, hands to the floor, the leg in the fabric straight. Even walk your hands backwards. Good. Hands come up to the top of the mat. This foot that's on the ground hops back to downward facing dog shape. Three legged dog since our one foot is in. So here, shoulders will go over wrists. When that happens, lift those toes up and down. Back to three legged dog. Good. And then come back forward, plank, and then foot lifts up, down, scoot back, three legged dog. Let's repeat another five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good. And then we lower down onto each elbow. Once we're there, the foot on the ground steps into the fabric. We continue to bring the hips right over the shoulders, kind of holding that pipe. Just hold here as long as you still have that shoulder strength. When you need to drop down, it'll be left knee into pigeon pose. A couple of recovery breaths. <laughs> <laughs> so as we went through that sequence there, there were definitely moments of higher energy. So sometimes as we go through life, those moments of higher energy are the moments when we lose our groundedness because it's like, well, I can't do self-care anymore. Things just turn crazy on me or whatever. But that's really that invitation to try to tune down and kind of use that earth to support you the whole time. So maybe as we go through the second side, Try to have even more awareness of what is touching you down at any point. One more good breath. Heart rate slower. 
Long exhale. And when we free up the leg, if you need a recovery moment, take it. This can be wiggles, cat cows, down dog. Anything you need prior to the second side. <laughs> yeah, this is, that was a warming sequence for sure. <laughs> Okay. If you're ready, ready. That yeah, left a good sequence. Good sequence. <laughs> so left leg in. Starts with this with the splits. So gripping up high. Just relax for it. Don't feel like you have to like force it. That's what that sinking to gravity is. It's it's that realization that I don't have to necessarily hold myself up. It's just Letting myself relax and trusting that by squeezing my thighs together, I can come back. I'm safe. Good. Coming up to stand. If you feel like you're too far back, you can always hop forward. And then we're gripping right hand to the outside of left. That pushes the leg to that right side. Left arm opens up behind us. Good. Starting to return. Step the bottom of the foot into the fabric. Got five times going up and down. So when you're ready, take that inhale step. Exhale to go. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And a bonus one coming up with more control, going a little bit slower, less swinging. Wrap the right thigh around. Right arm through the center, right shoulder forward, and tree pose. A couple of breaths. Here, even though our tree pose isn't in the earth, try to ground down. Relaxing, trusting that fascia is well taken care of, it's safe. One more inhale. Exhale, left hand for safety. Right hand reaches back and grabs as soon as it can. Right leg through. And then with a tight grip, we point the left toes, grip the left toes in the fabric, lowering in front. Good, just a comfortable grip right above each shoulder. Nice little stretch backwards into the quads. Okay, coming up, perhaps no grip. If you need to grip, it's low. And we're going for 10, and going back, and up. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, and one. Good, hands to the floor, legs straight. And walk the fingertips back. Hands go toward top of that. 
Hop the other foot back to three-legged dog. So from here, plank. And then lift that foot up and down. Back to three-legged dog. Again, plank and lift. And back. Five. Four. Connected to the earth. This is when it gets really hard. Three, we're tired, but touch the earth. Imagine she's pushing you up instead of you pushing yourself up. Last one. Good, lower into elbows. See if you can step both feet in. Tuck your hips right above your shoulders. If there's moment where, moments where you want to try to lift one foot up, almost like you're going toward handstand, and then switching, you can always play with that. Beautiful, kind of playing with our weight. It takes a while for us to learn where our weight is over us. This is helpful for eventual inversions. Good. If you're ever going to be putting her right leg down, which one what? That's interesting. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah. Like <laughs> Is it right leg? Right leg down. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I have to do one more. Good. Heading out, you can take a, mo a recovery moment. Child pose, down dog, cat cows. Pretty good. We'll head to a nice straddle back inversion. <laughs> yep, I thought you'd say so. <laughs> You're welcome to do any variations you want to. Absolutely. Yeah, because you can tilt off balance with this and then realize, oh, I'm not in it. Like, then yeah. adjust. Yeah. I'm never really in it, but I, at least I feel like I'm using some arms. You are, yeah. I think of it as a step toward it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
you're welcome to do any other stretches you like. And if and when you're ready for shavasana, you can take any okay. shavasana you want. Okay. You kind of almost have to go more from like you have to get like the, the right spot on your back, yeah, like, kind of toward the low back, yeah. Yeah, you have to like what like the balance is interesting because the legs like they want to try to come up and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to do a seated cobbler's pose shavasana. Yep. Yep, go for it.
So we'll wrap up class today inside our Shavasana. And this will give us a chance afterwards to just kind of come out at our own pace. So perhaps with hands at the heart, we recall in our mind's eye that vision of the plant and how necessary the earth is to it. Without the earth, very few plants are able to thrive. It needs that groundedness, that nurturing, that those minerals. It needs that security. And so the same is with us. When we think that we can live in stressful, anxious, just busy stuff 24-7, we're going to wear ourselves out because we're not grounded. Those are the energies taking us away from that connection to earth. And so if we take the time for self-care, for self-improvement, and even just for quiet contemplative meditation, these are the types of things that brings our energy back down to the earth. It helps us grow those roots. It helps us receive the minerals, and the nutrients that we need, as well as the safety and security. And so with this visualization of grounding to lead us into this marvelous week, let's allow ourselves to wrap up the time we've got to share together today with the sound of OM. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light, with happiness, and peace. Namaste.